Good afternoon and welcome. My name is Brian Kosminski with True North Trout. We are in northern Michigan, surviving another day of our stay-at-home order during the COVID-19. It is May 7th. We've had a beautiful week this week. The weather forecast is calling for snow this weekend. Unfortunately, it's hard to believe we're, <laughs> we're talking about white stuff and it's going to be the first week in May. Backcountry Hunters and Anglers, great organization in case you, obviously you know who they are. You're following them right now on YouTube. They reached out to me and asked me if I would be a part of this Friday Night Flies event. I was very honored to join the names of many others that are before me and others that are to come. Join the BHA. Get out there. Get involved. Keep public lands public. Keep access to our rivers accessible. The places that we find near and dear to hike, camp, bird watch, be with family. All the things that we're doing right now are largely in part due to the work done at BHA. Fly tonight that we're going to be tying is going to be the Royal Coachman. Uh, this is a Michigan version. We, we're doing a Marabou Coachman. You can tie this up in white, yellow, brown, olive, whatever colors you like. But in the fall, we throw this a lot for brook trout, and it's a very effective fly. I found in Fly Patterns History by Harold Smedley, 1943 version, a little bit of history on the fly. I'd like to give you that right now. The Royal Coachman, fly to be named the Royal Coachman, was first tied in 1878 by John Haley, who in 1877 opened a fly shop at 320 Henry Street in New York City for tying flies and giving instructions in fly tying. He was the first dealer in fly tying materials in the United States. Charles F. Orvis of Manchester, Vermont, in a letter to Fred Mather dated 1885 in July, wrote, I had for many years made fishing rods and reels, and in filling orders for the same, had frequent requests for other tackle to be sent in the same package. I then ordered to supply these demands small quantities of flies from the dealers, first ordering a complete line of samples with names attached. These I received, but found it utterly impossible to duplicate my orders. I was continually disappointed by the substituting of other flies or sizes than the ones I had ordered, and I, in turn, was forced to disappoint and apologize to my customer. Then I thought that if there was any way out of this dilemma caused by confusion in names and carelessness in copying exactly the pattern fly, I should seek it. In time, one of my family viewed with favor the idea of learning to tie flies. To this end, I employed one of the best fly tires in the city to come to my house and stay with me until he had imparted his knowledge and skill, and when I felt that we were competent, I advertised to fill orders exactly in accordance with directions. The Royal Coachman was first offered to purchasers by me. It did not, however, originate with me. The fly tire I mentioned long ago sent me a sample of the same saying, I have just been tying some flies to order for a gentleman. He says he likes the Coachman better than any other fly but he finds it very frail and he wants me to tie some with red silk in the middle to make them stronger and he also wanted to add a sprig of wood duck for a tail i send you a fly to see i think it quite handsome the fly enclosed had a white wing brown hackle peacock body bound in the center with red silk and a tail of wood duck feather with the black and white bars one evening a number of us gathered around the table looking at flies my family mr horace dunn of san francisco and Mr. L. Orvis of Hartford, Connecticut, were present discussing the cop, the prop, propriety of every fly having a name, numbers given them little or no individuality. I said, but what is one to do? I do not propose to name flies. We have too many names already. Why not? S said they, if you make a new combination, name it, or else it will never be popular. No one can remember to distinguish flies by numbers. They get confused. A name fixes a fly in your mind. Well, I answered, that may be, but look, here is a fly, a handsome fly. It is similar to a coachman, but it is not a coachman. There is but one coachman. That fly we all know with a white wing, peacock body, and brown hackle. I will tell you, exclaimed Mr. L. C. Orvis, that is an extra fine coachman. All that scarlet makes it quite magnificent quite magnificent, call it the Royal Coachman. This seemed suitable, so the fly was christened. Not long after I published a list of flies and included the Royal Coachman in the number. The member of the family referred to this 
to his daughter, Mary, who later as Mary Orvis Marbury produced Favorite Flies in Their Histories, 1892. It was she who wrote, The associations connected with artificial flies are so many and so pleasant that they should neither be lost nor ignored since they constitute one of the charms of angling. There's a little bit more history on the fly that we're about to tie. Let's get to it. First, the hook that we're going to be starting off with, I'm gonna throw into my vise. You can use any streamer hook. I chose a nymph hook. This is the U-Series U103 size six. I like the 2X, 2XL length and the 1X wire. It's a little bit stronger, but it's not super heavy. A lot of streamer hooks are going to be 4XL, and they're going to be a, a little bit long for all the body material that you're going to be tying on. Uh, the thread that we're going to be using, we have the Vivas 12 aught. Lay down a quick small thread base. Bring it down to the tail. Shout out to my buddy Andrew Grillos, because the other day he was tying with one of these and I had to dig it out of my other fly box. Next up we have golden pheasant. This is going to be dyed orange. This would be more the natural golden color which you can use as well. Having these barred variations on the end of the feather give the fly a added illusion of movement, I believe. We want this to be about the length of the shank of the hook. Measure that off, lay it up on top. One nice loose wrap, second tie, bring it down. Always cut from the top. And <clears throat> then we're gonna grab some peacock. Uh, this is a UV peacock. Uh, I, in recent history, there's been a lot of literature that fish can see in UV color. They haven't reported back to say whether that was true or not, but we're buying the books and we're buying the material. I'm going to crisscross that over the top, trim off my excess. What I like to do though is I will take my thread and wrap the peacock around it, giving the peacock a little, the hurl is going to have a little bit more strength and rigidity. Grab all the materials together. Form a nice rear aft section. And then I can loosen up the peacock. Being careful not to cut my thread on the hook. One or two good wraps. Material up above, trim. Choice is yours uh, on your dubbing. I do like the UV ice dub or just regular orange dub. Um, I don't know what it is about orange and red, but brook trout, brown trout, especially in the fall when they're looking to add a few pounds on for the, the winter season, or maybe they're getting very competitive about their spawning space. They're going to hit anything that comes into their territory that looks like it might be a small feeding minnow that's going to want to eat eggs. Uh, dubbing can be very boring, long, and tedious. You can watch videos by some other guys that are going to spread out the dub, do a dubbing loop. I think it's just as easy to get one strand caught at the top up by the hook, wrap the thread down, get one wrap over, I'm going to bring sequential wraps up to about the two-thirds point. I don't want to crowd the eye. That's one of our most common mistakes in all fly tying. Um, I need to grab a couple more pieces of peacock. Two or three. Choice is yours. How, how much bulk do you want to have? How much iridescence with the peacock? I'm just going to get one or two quick good wraps. 
cut off my excess there. And again, wrap that peacock three or four times around my thread. This section right here is a little bit more critical than the tail because this is going to hold my wing up over the body. So you definitely want to have a little bit more of a, a hump right here. Next, I like to add a little bit of flash on the thorax, the underside of the fly. I will either use, this is a Grizzly Accent Flashaboo or the Rainbow. Rainbow is awesome. Pull this out of the sleeve or you can cut a small section on the back. I'm gonna grab three to four strands, separate them out from the rest, cut them at about three to four inches. Bring them right up underneath the bottom. Wrap twice, take the front guys, fold them back. And now I can trim this at now or afterwards. I'm gonna do it right now. I'm, I want the length of these to be just about even with the front hook. Next, I wanna grab some marabou. Uh, quality marabou is critical. Uh, you can buy a pack 295 or whatever and you're only gonna end up using about a third of it because you wanna find a good plume like this one. That will be able to pulsate through the water and look like it's flowing and breathing. A uh, lesson from Mr. Cali Gallup, don't run this through your mouth because the colors from other dyed materials can probably give you cancer. Uh, so either wet your fingers to hold these down. I wanna measure this over the top of the fly I don't want the length of that overwing to be longer than the, the back end of the shank, so I'm going to make a quick cut right here. Line that up right on top. One or two nice, good, tight wraps. Now I can trim all this excess off. Make sure you're using good fine tip scissors. These are new from Umqua and they're, a, uh, they're not $40 scissors. They compete with the $40 scissors though. Build up a small head. Whip finish. You can tie this in any size you like. This is a six. Uh, you can go as big as four. You can go as small as 12. Uh, I find that there are very few fish in the world that won't eat a one inch minnow. Uh, a lot of guys are out there throwing eight inch articulated whatever you want to call it, whatever fly, but there are very few fish that won't eat that fly when it lands near them. It has a, a nice movement underwater. It's light and you can throw it with a four weight and get, get it to where you need to go and most fish will hit it. Um, take one out for a spin, you'll be surprised at how many big fish will get aggressive, especially in the fall time, fishing a small coachman. Once again, thank you for joining us. Join BHA, get out there, get involved, keep public lands in public hands. Thank you very much.